Hey guys, this is my kitchen. As you can tell, it's uh, looking pretty dated. The wife wants to redo it, but we're gonna do it on a budget. I think I can do it for around $500, and you'll see the difference. Hope you enjoy. So the plan is to take out that cabinet right there, because it's always in the way. I'm talking to my wife right here, and I'm always like, hey honey, how you doing? And then right back up, it's in the way. Easy choice. Hey, don't touch it, buddy. <laughs> See? It's all running into a bit of a problem. There's uh, nails between these two cabinets here and here. They're not sticking out at all. So I'm going to stick my oscillating tool right in between here and just pop those off. If you have a sawzall, that'll do the same thing. I got it. Yeah. I need to. Oh. <laughs> the joys of home improvement. <gasps> We've been ducking under this for a long time. Ten years. Yep, so we're gonna have to paint that, but it actually came off a lot cleaner than I thought. All right, so what you can see is I put a counter on here. I was able to put this beadboard on first. And then I put these supports on. When I bought the countertop, this actually came in a full piece. And I just sliced it down the back side by flipping it over and putting tape on it. And you can just use a circular saw. Uh, put these on. We were able to find those in the same place as bought the countertop. And then I can kind of, there's actually a little bit of a lip here. So if I push in, it actually gets under there and I can go to the wall. And so now I've actually, it's, it's kind of trimmed up. So I don't even have to put trim there if I don't want to. This will be painted white as well. And um, I just threw a base cabinet. Actually, this is a wall cabinet, but uh, I'm using it as a base cabinet. So I'm gonna lift that up and put a base under it just with some scrap wood or uh, screw it to the wall. I'm not sure yet. What we're gonna do here now is take this old countertop and make it look like this nice granite. It's gonna have a nice glossy shine. You're gonna be able to find this product in the description below, but, this, but essentially it's paint with a gloss on top. What you're gonna do first is make sure your counter is nice and clean. Uh, any oils or anything, make sure you take off. Then you're gonna take this black primer and you're gonna put it on all the surfaces that are gonna be, uh, that you want to look like granite. So it comes with a roller and a brush, and just use the brush on the you know, smaller edges and corners, use the roller to get all the flat surfaces. One thing you wanna make sure you do is uh, tape off anything that you don't want this primer to touch. So for us, basically it was the sink. We didn't have to worry about any other surface because we're gonna repaint everything else after. Once you have the primer on, you gotta start putting the different colors on. It comes with three colors. One thing we notice is to get the corners, sometimes you wanna cut a brush into kind of a triangle pattern. We had an old brush there and it was really helpful getting into the corners. Um, but essentially you take those three colors and you kind of dab it on, dab it on, and then you have these sponges also that give it kind of a textured look. My wife's not an artist, but after a little bit of practice, she really got the hang of it. You can kind of practice on a piece of paper, um, but you just tap on those different colors and you use the sponge to give it a texture. And I think it turned out really nice. Now what you're gonna do is take the gloss and you're going to uh, dip it in there and then just kind of apply it back and forth. Uh, you could start with, I would start with, with the boards and back, or corners and then the larger flat surfaces uh, you can kind of apply it on and then once you have it on there then you're going to smooth it out by rolling it one last time now you're actually going to want to put on two coats instead of just one and that's what's going to give it kind of protection but also a nice shine so that's what it, what it's going to look like when it's done it should be a nice smooth finish but here again you see it for rolling it on and then when you're done, you just do one time pass through. And so essentially you want to get that, to get that smooth finish, you want to get it on there and then go over a small area, maybe three or four feet. But overall, we're really pleased with it. Even after two months of using it, it turned out really well. Remember, we taped everything off, but now that the paint and the gloss is dried, we need to take it off. So use a X-Acto knife or a box cutter and just run it along the edge so that when you pull the tape up you don't pull any paint with it. It'll need to dry for a couple days after your final coat but 
Overall, we're really pleased with it. Even after two months of using it, it turned out really well. So when cutting the beadboard, you can use a table saw like I have here. I bought it from my father-in-law. Or you can just use a circular saw. It really doesn't make a big difference. Uh, this is just gonna ensure that I have a straighter line. But even if your line isn't completely straight, you're, again, you're gonna be covering up with trim. So don't be too afraid of it. If you screw it up, you know, these are cheap. So not a big deal. So what we're doing is putting this beadboard on. Uh, if you're the nail gun, just be mindful that you only wanna nail it along the edges that you're gonna cover and trim. So I'm gonna put some corner trim here and some uh, round trim along the bottom and top edges. If you're using a nail gun, just realize that also you can turn it upside down to get along the bottom edge. If you're not using a nail gun, one thing you can do also is just put adhesive on the back, uh, like liquid nails, and then put it on there. But if you ever wanna take it off though, it's also gonna remove whatever it's attached to and can cause a bigger mess. All right, so we've been putting on the beadboard here. When we come to a socket, luckily I came up right on a seam. So I was able to cut my board like this, which I didn't have this notch in here, I just had this panel here, and then I just kind of held it up. But uh, once, you're, once you get this out, you can just slide it behind. Now the trick is, please turn off the power when you do this. The trick is you have to get it behind the, uh, behind the outlet right here. You gotta keep those feet on the outside because you want it to be firm. You gotta pull this out, because otherwise when you put your cover on, the socket would be too deep. So you want it to look like that when it's done. So once you have it in place, you can then tighten it down. Oh, but first, we need to glue it. Now, the reason I glue it is because I don't want to have to put tacks all over the place. I can put it along the bottom edge and the top edge, uh, but like in this area, I don't really want to tack it. I could, I could use wood putty and fill it in, um, but this stuff works just fine. And if I ever pull this off, I'm gonna to want to pull that off anyways. So you just put about a quarter inch bead in here. Let me put a little more on the edges here. Looks like it's pushed in there pretty well. So I can start pushing it down here. And of course, to really hold it in place, I'm gonna use some nails. Some people would say this is overkill, but uh, that's all right. So while I'm pushing up right here, I can tack it in spot. Okay, so once this is all centered up like this, I'm gonna tighten this down. See these little tabs right here are gonna stop it from sinking in too far, but it's still gonna hold it tight. That way when you're using your electrical outlet, it doesn't wanna move when you plug things in and out. Give a nice tight feel. So just snug, it doesn't have to be super tight. And once I put my plate on, it's gonna cover up all my mistakes right there. Here's where it gets tricky. Not only do I have a socket to work around where a seam won't butt up to it, but I also have this trim to work around here too. So um, I started writing it all out, but I didn't really like what I was coming up with. So instead I grabbed a piece of paper and I just put it inside there and went around the trim just like that. And that way, uh, if I know I cut it just inside this paper, I should be good. And I can actually feel where the socket is so I can make some marks on there as well. So originally, I had this trim plan. Kind of cover up the seam and all these nail marks right here. But you can kind of see this edge right here, so I don't really like that. So instead I got some of this trim right here. And now that's gonna be a lot better so I don't have to uh, really paint that edge. I might have to get a paintbrush in there a little bit, but it's gonna cover up these little nail holes really nice and uh, it's just gonna give a nice clean look. Here I'm gonna show you how to paint cabinets. These cabinets are 30 years old and have this gloss finish. And I'm gonna show you step by step on how to get these prepared to paint and then reattach them. The first step is to remove all the doors and hinges. You need to remove the hinges so you can paint the face, but also you need to remove the doors because you're gonna to wanna to sand those in a different location and paint them as well. So now we just need to sand the faces. Uh, we're sanding the doors out in the garage right now, but I'm gonna use 120. Just kind of go over the surface. Now 120 might actually create a little bit of scratching, and if you notice that, then switch to 220 after you're done. But we're just trying to get the varnish off. I notice I'm not feeling any sort of finished edge right here. 
So I just ink it the face so it shouldn't really take very long. It took longer to probably empty all the cabinets though. You can see what we did in this cabinet is just kind of cover them up with some towels um, because we're only painting the frame anyways so I didn't want to take everything out. Maybe it's a good idea, bad idea, I'm not really sure where to find out. Here I'm priming all the cabinets. You can just work along. If you don't worry about the walls, you don't need to tape it off. But there are areas that I was concerned with, like the uh, vinyl window. So as I'm painting that area, my wife also starts putting on some blue tape. You can see that in the description if you'd like. Blue or green tape is fine. It's called painter's tape. And you're going to want to tape all that off while you're putting the primer on. So you can see here that we uh, got everything primed now. All the kitchen frames. Did two coats. I'm using Bullseye uh, primer and uh, it went pretty well. Uh, we did sand last night. It seems to be holding. I did kind of the scratch test. You know, just gotta go up here and scratch it, make sure it's holding. I know we had an issue before of it flaking off because of the uh, varnish underneath. So uh, we'll be able to paint tonight after this cures for a few hours. And now we're gonna work on the uh, on the doors. All right, so now what we're gonna do is uh, sand these using some sort of palm sander uh, just for the flat areas. I got a clamp on here, just kind of holds it in place so I can use two hands on this at once. So I have that done, I'm just going to take a uh, 120 here. You can go 220 if you worry about scratches. I'm not. I'm going to go in here and get all the details, all the trim work. Again, we're not sanding it all off, we're just Trying to scuff it up a little bit so the uh, primer will hold on. Once I have this done, I'm just going to blow it off the air compressor or you can use a shot vac and just suck it all off. I'll hand this to my wife. She'll uh, just use a damp cloth to get all the, any leftover dust and let it sit a while. It's pretty cold out here. We want it to get to room temperature, but we're going to paint these in the basement. So you can see we started sanding these and now that we have them all in the basement, uh, my wife started priming them and basically we put them on their backside um, or we painted the backside first and then uh, put two coats of primer on there, flip it over, two coats of primer and then probably let it rest overnight and then paint it uh, tomorrow. So you can see we flip these over and start painting. We found it best to use a brush for um, just like the corners like you see she's edging right now and then use a small roller for all the flat surfaces. It gives a pretty even uh, look to it, even though this is just primer, so it doesn't really need to look even yet, but uh, it looks pretty good already. Oh, also you should have a lot of good ventilation. So we have our furnace vents open down here and our garage door open, try to push some of that air out. All right, so now we're putting on our cabinet doors. You'll want to mount the brackets to the door. Luckily I was able to use the uh, previous holes, which saves a little bit of time. And I got the handle on there and a couple little bumpers. It all came together from the Amazon link that I have below. So to set this on there, I'm just going to kind of line it up with the drawer and where that meets. And then it just goes about a quarter inch up from the rest. Now it wants to shift right as I tighten it down. So I actually start a little bit off to the left. And with a little bit of luck, I'm gonna hold this with my knee. Just like that. And I will screw it in from this point. There. It opens and everything. There you go. I got two more screws to throw in there. And I'm all set. Don't want to over tighten these because if I do, they'll strip out. Liquor secure. Nothing wrong with having a well stocked social cabinet. So we got the new cabinets in and they're painted, but what we need to deal with now is that area where we took down the old cabinet. I was able to use drywall mud and just smooth it in there where all the gaps are. And uh, now we just gotta sand it down so we can prime it and paint it. Just using a little more joint compound to get the little areas that still need a little help. The indents are a little steep. Good. Let that dry and sand it down uh, a little further. 
So we started the printing process. Um, you just gotta tape off around the edge of the cabinets here. We got that Frogger's green tape, which will be in the description there. Uh, we didn't take off this door here because it was too close to the edge, but we still wanna paint all the way there. Um, so we're making pretty good progress. You'll wanna sometimes bring an extra light into the room just so you can see the imperfections a little better and yeah, we don't have too many shadows when you're working up close to this stuff. Just threw some plastic up and taped around the cabinets. That way if we dripped, um, we won't have a problem. Not really necessary if you got a steady hand. Also, don't do that. That was me. I was talking to my daughter and I just started painting the ceiling instead and then I tried to wash it off and it looks really awful now. So we have to paint our ceiling. Ugh. Wife's happy about it. Now I'll show you how to replace a light. All right, so the next thing we did was remove this light. It was a fluorescent bulb, and it just didn't look very good at all. So I'm gonna replace it with an LED light. And uh, that's what it'll probably look like when you take it down a light. You'll probably have two, maybe three wires left. And I can explain how to put one back up. It doesn't take long at all. You'll need a light, screwdriver, and maybe a wire stripper. This light was only about 30 bucks on Amazon, and it's LED, so I should be able to save a little bit of money on energy costs. Three wire nuts, two screws, and a light. That's all we need. All right, so what we have here is we have three wires. There's two here. That's because this yellow and green one uh, is your ground wire. And I do have some copper up there. That's what you'd usually attach it to, unless you have a green or yellow wire. Uh, but this is just an LED light. It doesn't really need a ground. I know some people in the comments are probably going to comment on saying you need it, but uh, I really don't think it's necessary for uh, just a low powered switch like this. Um, but I'm going to add white to white and then red to black. Um, this red is just some spare wire that my grandfather used, but uh, it should be black. Um, but as long as I got white to white, I'm good. And then the uh, black or red is considered my hot wire. Uh, that's really what powers it. Then you notice you have these um, screw openings here. And what that is, is on the front side, you just click it in, this pulls right out, and the screws come through here. Even though this house is 30 years old, I was happy to see that these supplied screws that came with the uh, light are actually gonna work with this electrical box. So they're just gonna go here and here. So first I have the two white wires. I'm gonna put them side by side, just like this. And then I uh, will take the wire nut and they'll go in there together. And then you just start twisting. And it kind of intertwines the wires together so they won't come apart. And then also nothing's gonna be able to touch it. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with my black and red wire. Again, yours will probably be black and black wire. This house is just old and my grandpa had a way of doing things. Just to test it, let's see if it works here. Oh, there it is, it works very well. Or probably should turn off the circuit for this, but I got a light switch right over here, and so I'm just doing that. <laughs> I think I got the right spot now. Yeah, a little bit of work to line that up. There we go. I was able to get those screws right in there, and it tightened up just fine. And you just take this flap, it has these two little tabs, just gotta line that up right here. And then it shuts like that, you gotta open it, you just press it again. Flip it on, and it works. So if you remember before, we had this fluorescent light, and then we also had this wood kind of covering in this area, and I just didn't like the look of that, it wasn't very clean looking. This allows a lot more light to come in. And uh, having this over sink light, it's just really handy to have, you know, kind of brightening the area where I need to do some dishes right now. So for 30 bucks, to get a light like this is a pretty awesome deal. Just uh, go ahead and try it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. You can also check out other projects I've done.